Welcome back to the workshop guys. This video is my 3D printer enclosure. It's well overdue, but it is finally here. This will hopefully allow me to keep my 3D printer in the shop, constantly printing my helmets and other gadgets. It's just gonna be a very basic construction, but I wanna get some fans, some electronics, to keep it cool, keep it dust free, and it should allow me to work alongside it so I don't have to worry anymore. Keeping this build as simple as possible, I went with a pocket hole and plywood construction. I went down to my local timber yard and they were kind enough to cut all the sheets up for me, which would make it super easy to get home, but also super easy just to jump straight into the construction of this box. Um, when I don't have the time while I'm at work, it's nice to just be able to put it together rather than spend the majority of the time cutting. So I just slapped it together with some glue and some pocket holes and it turned out really well. Just to give you some scale, I actually sat inside the box, as you can see there, it's quite large, but this is perfect for my 3D printer. To make the base for the shelf that the 3D printer will sit on, I just cut some little runners. Uh, this will prop the shelf up and give me some space underneath for some electronics. Uh, just stuck some glue on the back of these and pinned them. They're never gonna have to come off and I just wanted them to be secure. While pinning this, uh, I was sort of fighting with my tripod. The hose for the nail gun kept getting caught around it uh, but I was just being lazy so enjoy my face uh, nearly getting smacked with the camera Next, I marked out the little window for the door, so I was gonna buy some plexiglass in there. Uh, this will just allow me to see the 3D print, so I just used my track saw uh, and then finished with a hand saw as well. Using a rebate bit in my router, I created a little rebate for the plexiglass to sit in. This is just to make it a bit of a cleaner look, but if you wanted to, I suppose you could just silicon it right back to the door, but this just made it a much cleaner flush look. And then I went through with a chisel and just cleaned up the corners so that your plexiglass square corners obviously sit in there properly. Moving on to the hinges, uh, I saw on Amazon this really cool hinge jig that works with the uh, concealed hinges. So you just clamp it on there, put your drill in and all the presets are already done. You drill down to the depth, uh, drill two little pilot holes for the screws and then put your hinge on. Super simple, I was really impressed and it makes it super easy. I actually end up adding a hinge after I'd painted uh, to shore up the door's strength and it wasn't quite closing how I wanted to, uh, but this jig made it super simple and pretty clean, no marking out, no nothing, so I would really recommend going to get one uh, and I'm going to stick a link uh, down below where you can go and buy one. 
Next, this was a slightly trickier uh, task for me, something I'd never done before. So I made a little circle jig to cut out the fan holes. Um, this could be done with a jigsaw. I left it till afterwards. So I decided to just screw my router down to a bit of plywood, uh, poke a nail through it where I wanted the center of my hole to be and just started turning. Just so that people know, I wasn't going to show too much finishing on this project, but I used a bit of gyroproc filler uh, on the edges and some of the face work just to clean it up a little bit. The control panel for this 3D printer enclosure will have a temperature sensor and two buttons, one for power and one for LEDs. Uh, it's a fairly simple way to cut it out, just using a jigsaw, but you could use a handsaw or a coping saw. Uh, and the two holes I just drilled with a forcing a bit. This video is sponsored by Shadow Foam. Click the link below or use Matt's DIY at checkout for 10% off all their products. I gave the whole box a light sanding as well as the door and control panel. This was just to take the filler down and give the plywood a bit of a smoother finish before the primer stage. After sanding, I hit it with about two to three coats of primer. This was just basic white. And then I moved on to a satin wood white finish. I wanted a really good seal on the door for this 3D printer. One, because it would keep it in place best, but two, it was mainly to keep the dust out. Uh, and you'll see here, this is just a self-adhesive weather seal that you can get from B&Q. It's super cheap and it works super well. Here you can see I've added a little clasp to the door just to keep it shut. That weather stripping does make it pop open slightly, so a toggle like this is really helpful. Onto the electronics of this build, here you can see I've got a fan filter and just a basic 120mm fan off of Amazon. When doing this yourself, just make sure you've got a good intake and exhaust fan. Adding the control panel temporarily, I could start wiring up. I won't show you the full process because it's quite hard to film and I will point out at the end of this what each electrical component I use is. I tipped the whole box upside down and it made it super simple just to get these LEDs on. These are basic adhesive LEDs and they provide quite a lot of light inside here so they were perfect. I found at Screwfix these mirror screws that had a little cap that screw in. I thought these were perfect, they were a much better finish than the original white caps I was thinking of using. So we've got our power. got our transformer that takes it from 240 down to 12 volt we've got our temperature switch that has a temperature sensor at the back which controls these fans then we've got our LEDs and switches that turn them on and off and also the switch to the left of that is our power switch 
To secure the little window in place, I just used some transparent silicon. This is perfect because it creates a really nice seal and any uh, excess you can just wipe away your finger or a bit of wet cloth and it leaves a really nice finish. I actually used a little bit of hot glue just to keep the window in place while that's set. The last build aspect to this was just to add the handle. Uh, I went for the same chrome satin look that I have on the drawers and that was just to make it look similar. I did a quick test just to check my 3D printer actually fit in the box because I hadn't done that yet, uh, but it fit perfectly. I moved the 3D print enclosure into its final area and that's where it will stay. I hope you've enjoyed this video guys. I hope someone's found it educational or helpful in any way when they're building their own 3D print enclosure. Any questions or comments you've got, please put them down in the comment section. Like and subscribe because that really helps the channel out. And I hope you enjoy your day. Thank you for watching.